100 Textures short tutorial on how to add textures to your images. I've made it really easy to use these textures with an added action pack that I'll take you through now in how to implement the textures. So let's just start with this image. Basically this image is a composite and Textures work beautifully with composites because they help bring them together. You can use textures on any photograph and different textures will suit different images, but textures on composites really do help to blend and I'll show you why. So at the moment, everything's quite smooth and soft. We want to add some textures to give it a more antique, painterly feel. Now there are 100 textures available in this pack and they do all sorts of things. And some of the ones that are my favorite are the paper textures, the ones with the crumpled paper. And you'll find there's a bunch of different ones that you can use here, as well as some more colored textures. Now the different textures will give different color effects as well, but the actions will help you to control the color as you need to. So let's just try, first of all, a paper texture. So I'm going to show you first, I've added all of my textures into my libraries. Now your libraries in Photoshop are a place where you can keep your textures and sync them across to different places, to different computers, and they'll always be there. So I recommend when you first open up your textures pack, create a new library by clicking on create new library, and then just drag the texture pack in there and then you'll have access to them at all times. The other great thing about this is it stays as a link to your textures here and it essentially becomes a smart object. I'll show you why this is important. So let's just grab a texture, throw it on there. Now at the moment uh, the texture is rectangular and this image is square. Now I'm going to just stretch that across. When it comes to textures, you can stretch a little bit. These textures are 5,000 pixels on the longer side, so they are high resolution textures, but you can afford to stretch them a bit because you're creating them as overlays. So that you will get away with a bit more than you do if it's a straight image that you're placing in your file. Now, if you go over to the actions, now when you're in actions, you want to be in button mode for this. It will just make it a whole lot easier for you to click on what you want. So the first thing that you want to do, if you've dragged this image in from your finder, it will not be a linked image. It will not be essentially a smart object. So you should make it a smart object so that all of these effects that you add are non-destructive. I'll show you what I mean. When you actually just place it in, it will be like this if you've dragged it from your finder or your explorer. So by clicking on make smart object, it means that all of these effects will be non-destructive. Now if you've dragged it from your Photoshop library, that's fine. You don't need to click on that. It will work in the way you want it to. So next, we want to choose the overlay mode. Now the most common ones are overlay, soft light and hard light. So you can simply press a button to see whether you like it, soft light, hard light. So these give you different effects and of course you can adjust the effects and the opacity down here. If you want a simple click to make it 50% then you can do that. Let's just take it back to overlay which is generally the one that you want to use. So we're on 50% in overlay mode. If you want to take it back to 100% you can do that. Now the next thing that you might want to do is create a warm tone from this or a cool tone or if it's a colored texture make it neutral. So you can click on warm tone and you can see it will warm your whole image up by creating a warm tone with the overlay. If you change the opacity down it will affect the color tone as well. If you want to make it a cool tone you can do the same thing. We can go back to neutral and that is not affecting the color at all. Now we also might want less contrast or we might want to lighten or darken our overlay. Click on lighten, it makes the whole thing lighter. We click on darken, it usually means the effect is less overpowering on overlay mode. Less contrast will give less effect as well. We can clear all the effects with the click of a button and just go back to the standard overlay modes. And we can also click on create mask and that will give us a brush where we can actually brush 
the overlay off the area that we don't want it to appear and that might be on skin or on someone so you can actually do that as well. So that gives you a really quick idea of how these all work. Let's turn that overlay off and bring in a coloured overlay. So you can see all the different colours and textures and things here. We'll bring in one that is very obvious. This is a painting or a paint overlay. So I'll resize that again over the top. And let's choose the overlay mode. So we'll click overlay. This is obviously not working for this particular image, but it would work for other images. But if we wanted to make that neutral, just click that and it would create a neutral effect. This particular overlay is probably a little bit bright for the image, so we can darken it and it will give you that effect. So if we turn it off and on, you can see where the different uh, overlay painterly areas are taking place. Let's turn that off. And let's just go back up and try another texture that's quite dark and blue. So we'll bring this one in. This is a cool, very textured, painterly effect. Now we'll create overlay mode. You can see what it does. We can try soft light, hard light. So we go back to overlay mode and we want to, for example, create less contrast. We click there. Now you can see there's still this really interesting texture effect going on. It's almost like a textured paper there, but it's not overpowering. We might want to warm this up, so we can click on warm tone and it will warm it up, or cool tone to bring it back to cool, or neutral so that it's completely neutral. So there is so much that you can do with these overlays and there are 100 different overlays in there with different effects. Each of your images, you might want to actually pile them up and add effect over effect over effect as well or bring them in between things. So you might want to bring something underneath your character for example. If I just turn that off, you can see there's an effect underneath our character because our brandy is in a separate layer so you can also do that if you're compositing and you want to add effects beneath and above. Have some fun with these textures, I know you will. Thank you very much.